Tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fires. They not only try their best, they have to do what's required. Okay, if anything, it's the aliens who are watching (laughs) us, but okay. We're progressing as a species when somebody figured out that you can put salt on sweet. You have no opinion. I can't wait to see what happens next. IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. The lights are down low. The studio is a crisp 69 degrees. Nice. Daddy just popped a blue chew. <laughs> it's t- <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> On this episode, <laughs> I live, bitch. The Idaho Potato Museum, Olympics, Chuckers, Haven Baby Box, what? Watermelon and mustard, and it's not enough that we do our best. We have to do what's required. (laughs) You know what? That might be our new slogan. Uh, Guess what? We live, bitch. (laughs) You've seen that meme, right? Of the dad with, uh, he's in surgery recovering, texted his daughter, I live, bitch. (laughs) Yeah, I actually have seen that. I thought that was really funny. You know, kind of reminds me of that movie that we watched just last night. Yeah. If. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With um. John Krasinski. Uh, I wanted to say Jim Halpert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Boy, did we watch some movies. A lot this weekend. And it was all so fun. We had way too much popcorn. And my poor dog. He had so much popcorn. <laughs> Were there guy. any uh, after effects of uh, that? Like, did he? I mean, there we've was talked a- about pepperoni <laughs> dog farts before. <laughs> uh, I, I'll say there- that I do think that the butter helped lube up his colon. Yikes! If that helps. So we okay. We went and saw Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh huh. At, at the Motor View, which I love, by the way. At the Motor View. Mm-hmm. And um, let's just get into it. Movies open on a Friday, theoretically. Technically. But every single movie theater was showing it Thursday night. Right. And they're like, oh, early premiere. Early pre- is it early if you're all doing it? Exactly. Or is it a ploy? We thought that we were getting some exclusive extra content here. Yeah. And then no. we realized that every other theater that was showing it was showing it early. Anybody can do it, which I think is great. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we saw it. Um, I don't know how much to give away. It's meta. It's uh, It looks like an attempt to... So the first two Deadpool movies were by uh, Fox. Right. And then this third one now is, you know, Disney bought Fox. And right. so it's Disney-fied and trying to make it part of the... Um, MCU. Yeah. And so I love anything having to do with Deadpool. Sure. It felt more like a prequel to a later movie. It almost seems like Ryan Reynolds is doing his best to correct a lot of things right. on the timeline to get well, Deadpool and into the MCU. I don't know if it's MCU. necessarily Ryan Reynolds who's doing it versus like Disney who's like, hey, here's how we can make it work. Right. Yeah. You know, or some collaborative writers going on. But yeah, I, it felt a little bit more like um, an epilogue. Rather than the actual book. Or a prequel. Yeah. But when faced with the choice of going to Deadpool, say, at Fat Cats in Rexburg. Right. Or Edwards in Idaho Falls, we're like, no, let's do the Motor View. I love the Motor Me, View. Me, you, your dog, Rango. Uh-huh. And that's why I love it. I can take my little bean boy with me. And <laughs> so we, I, I, I went and I saw, like... It was the bottom of the barrel. We literally scraped the bottom of the barrel on popcorn. (laughs) Right. Which is the butteriest, by the way. I have to say I agree. Like, (laughs) Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, this is too bad. I want it on top of the... No, no, no. But it was so buttery. You want the heavy, buttery stuff that falls to the bottom versus the light, fluffy Mm -hmm. stuff with no butter. And so salty that as I ate half a bucket... (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. Oh, yeah. No, I remember as we were driving home, literally scraping the bottom of the bucket with my finger and just like rubbing it on my gums like Coke. <laughs> my my lips got numb. They got numb and tingly. And I was like, I'm either having a heart attack or like somebody later, I, I told this to a friend today and, and they said, maybe you were getting like super dehydrated, dude. Oh, yeah, probably. But like, does anybody else do that? Does that happen to anybody else? I know that numb lips is 
technically a sign of like an allergic reaction. Right. So I here's something if, kind of funny. Huh. My face wash, I have this Nivea rose milk stuff that I bought. Mm -hmm. uh, of course you do. And it kind of makes my lips feel a little numb if I leave it on too long. <laughs> and I assume there was a, like some salicylic acid in it or something that was doing that. I don't know if there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know the health ramifications of eating half a bucket of Motor View drive-in <laughs> popcorn. Well, I mean, the mental health, I think, goes up. Maybe the physical health goes down because it makes you real happy. I <laughs> sure, yes. it clogs your heart. <laughs> Endorphins, adrenaline. Yeah. Um, what's the third one? Dopamine. Serotonin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. four. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, all the They were stuff. all firing. Yeah, yeah. But um, as far as my heart goes, mm. I might die soon. <laughs> yeah. If this is my now, soliloquy. Fair, I think that's any movie theater popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we had a couple of entertainment things happening this week. Uh, let's check out the Chuckers. Mm -hmm. This is Melaleuca Field, formerly McDermott Field. Oh, look, here's some history about the field. You know, the field hasn't changed since 1919. Oh, damn. Yeah. that's I, I oh, sat wow. while I was waiting for my um, Philly cheesesteak, which we'll get to here in just a second. Right. I read the board. Oh, wow. The field's been the same since 1919. So they must have just built the whole thing around it? Yeah, it was like at the edge of a park, you know, oh, okay. 100 some odd years ago. Aw. And now it's it kind of sad. They built a wall <laughs> and they were like, now you have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure little kids snuck in way back in the day. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Peanuts, Cracker Jacks. Yeah. Don't care. Ever come <laughs> back. Right. All that. When we went to the ball game, it was Roof Rescue Night, by the way. Thank you for the Frisbees, Roof Rescue, Mark Franklin. Usually at a baseball game, I've already had dinner. Right. If an event is at 7 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. you can bet your ass I've already eaten. Yeah. This particular night, however, I was so busy, I hadn't eaten yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is shocking, because usually you have your dinner at a good Christian time, like 6 p.m. Yes. But you were eating on heathen time this <laughs> night. <laughs> you and your whirlwind schedule. <laughs> I got to fit into this. Right. And so I was really hoping for a meal to fill me up. Mm -hmm. I got a $14 cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak. Mm -hmm. What's a Philly cheesesteak? Well, it's chopped beef, mm -hmm. it's onions, and it's peppers. Yeah. Um, all in a sandwich. Right. In a yeah. sandwich. With a, just a shit ton of cheese if you're doing it right. You got the chili cheese fries. So check this out. That Philly cheesesteak was literally four bites. It was four yeah. easy bites. It was so sad. It was not a dinner. Yeah. Look at how it doesn't even, it didn't even fill up the bun. I think that my the hoagie roll, my chili cheese fries were half the price and like quadruple the meal. Yeah. Now, mind you, I very specifically wanted chili cheese fries because when I first had them at Melaleuca Field, it was when I was working my very first job at Red Robin as a hostess. Uh -huh. They would send us with a handler to the field. And usually it would be the guys who had to wear the uh, Red Robin costume and prance around and stuff. But I don't remember exactly how, but this guy had like the other host. So I, it was a male host and a female host. They'd send us both. The guy would usually wear the costume. The girl would be the handler. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, for some reason, this guy had talked me into being the one wearing the costume. I'm just trying to picture you in this. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> Here's the thing. They had this literal vest uh -huh. that was made out of like, okay, um, otter pops, but like ice packs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it was just like they were tucked into little pockets and you wore that under the thing because it got so damn hot. So did they store this suit in the freezer? <laughs> they store the vest in the freezer, uh, okay. but the suit is in like the back room. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, you get to the field. You don the vest, you don the suit, you go and interact with folks, okay? Uh -huh. And I remember this one day, I was wearing the suit, I got a break for a minute, I think that they'd started the game and we were like, let's go get some food and hang out for a sec, because they always gave us checkers bucks when we would uh, wear the suit, Yeah, like we got some per diem for it. And I just was sitting in the back room at Melaleuca Field eating these chili cheese fries that were so deliciously with, with your salty. Head off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like uh, still wearing scared, the bird wings, the kids. you know, like can barely hold my fork, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
Um, but yeah, head off, <laughs> just like shoveling these things into my mouth because they were so deliciously cheesy and salty. And I've been chasing that high ever since, my guy. <laughs> we were there at the game and you're like, this needs more salt. Yeah. And I thought, Carly, maybe the secret ingredient is mascot sweat. <laughs> right. Maybe like you didn't work your ass off to earn these chili cheese fries. And that's why they didn't taste as good. Yeah. And I think you might be right. Because every other time I've gone, they've never been as good as that one very particular time. Or maybe some fry cook got real generous with the salt, you know? I'm probably <laughs> channeling my grandpa when I say, you know, nothing leads to a good night's rest like a hard day's work. You know, you gotta... I wish that was Nothing the case. leads to the good taste in chili cheese fries like sweating your balls off in a... <laughs> Listen... <laughs> Red Robin mascot. <laughs> As an insomniac, I can tell you that a hard day's work does not always guarantee a good night's sleep. And that is some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Chuckers was fun. Yeah. Um, I guess we lost that night. Oh, yeah. That sounds but, right. <laughs> uh, I, I just have to say, Idaho Falls Chuckers, your concessions are bullshit. What I should have done... <laughs> Some of them. Some of them are great. What I should have done is ordered, I could have ordered three hot dogs mm -hmm. for the same price as, and, and hot dogs are quantifiable. Yeah. They're not up to 17 year olds running the concession stand. Right. You know? Right. They are tube steaks that are a, an exact yeah, size. Yeah, they're, they're prepackaged. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. So back to the Motor View Drive-In. Mm -hmm. Th then we we roll up to the Motor View Drive-In. It's a double feature, Wolverine and Deadpool and Long Legs, uh -huh. which we ended up going to a different night. Right. Because I had work the next day and I was like, I'm not staying here for this. <laughs> yeah. It's $17 uh -huh. for, so for $3 more than the price of a pathetic four-bite Philly cheesesteak at the Chuckers, <laughs> you, you get in, you see two movies. Uh-huh. And then, like, for two people, yeah, and, and a dog. They're hot dogs. They don't even charge you for the dog. Yeah, <laughs> you got to bring Rango. Yeah, your he horrible had, Chihuahua. I love him so much, though, and he had such a good time. He barking really did. The other dogs. He sure did. <laughs> yeah, he's a turd. Got a pee. Open the door. Yeah, it's great. I know you're supposed to take him back in the North Forty or whatever, but he didn't even have to. Um. So no spoiler alerts. We're, we're just we're not going to spoil anything about Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm going to spoil one thing. All right. The dog in it is oh, super dog ugly. Pool. Super ugly. Yes. But super cute. And oh, I love her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and and they take her on the press junkets. Do they not? Yes. So yeah. apparently this dog was like voted ugliest dog in Britain, I think, or something like that. Uh -huh. And. That's how she got the part, and now she's like going on tour with Ryan Reynolds, and yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love Ryan. I love Hugh. I watch the <sighs> hot ones. You want to uh, stop what you're doing right now and go watch a different uh, show? <laughs> go watch the hot ones. Yeah, something with people who actually matter. <laughs> episode with Ryan Reynolds and huge yak man. <laughs> it's just great. So back to the meme, after trying 27-year-old beef jerky from King B, <laughs> we lived, bitch. <laughs> we did. We're back. Lips are a little numb, but mm -hmm. no, I, I actually didn't, I didn't feel anything after it. Yeah, no, it was fine. Yeah. In fact, I feel nothing most of the time. Mm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you should see a doctor. <laughs> I'm in the void. <laughs> That's called depression. Spoilers! <laughs> Okay. Kidding, kidding. What'd you think of uh, Long Legs? I was genuinely on the edge of my seat the entire time. Not, okay, maybe not literally, but like it was a very captivating. And Nicolas Cage, dude, was, I kind of think, brilliant in it. It took me a minute to even realize it was him. He had so much prosthetic makeup on yeah. that it was sort of freaky. But I think that the uncanniness of the makeup sort of added to the vibe of the movie. Absolutely. And I will say the cinematography of that was genius. It was very well framed. I think if I were to spoil, finger quotes, anything about the film, I would say, hey, uh, no, it's not your imagination. Yes, it does take place about 1995. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering why it looks like an 80s 90s horror flick that's why it's intentionally a mm -hmm. period piece 
Right. From Which, 30 years ago. And also, realistically, that is the only way that makes sense nowadays. Yeah. Because, okay, think of any other horror movie and think of how easily thwarted any guy would be with, like, the internet. DNA, okay. cell phones. Even, like, Freddy Krueger, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They could have been like, okay, I'm going to look up the news story on this Freddy Krueger guy and figure out what his deal is and figure out how to, like, thwart him from that. I wonder if we'll see more period pieces pre-cell phone. I kind of do. Know? I, I do. And I know there were bag phones like 89. Right. But it's not the same. Yeah. You can't like get on the internet and find any piece of inf- information. Even when the internet first came out, you couldn't. Even with Netscape. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was really neat. Um, I really liked the sort of background things that were going on. Uh, and I liked how many times you were sort of expecting something to happen and it didn't. Yeah. It was sort of like the anti jump scare. Which yes, I thought was neat. Right. Um, also, good observation. The actress in that did not smile even once. Oh, yeah. Like, even when it would have been normal and polite to smile, she doesn't. She, she, she's like one of those people on Facebook that doesn't like their teeth. R- like, right. <laughs> you, you can tell when, when flipping through their profile pictures, they have all closed mouth smiles. And I, I just want to go. See, but she didn't even do that. She I just want to recommend a good dentist. She just looks so sad the whole time. Yeah, and right. I mean, I would be too. I get it. it reminds like, me of my ex wife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. Point is, I thought it was a really. Uh, I thought it was a good movie, and I really want to watch it again. I feel like there are some things that I'd kind of like to analyze a little deeper before I like get too far into it. But yeah, I think it. I think it's got a lot of. Uh, Interesting lore that I'd like to look into more. So the Motor View Drive-In in in Idaho Falls. By the way, Rip Teton View Drive-In. Right. How sad is that? In Rexburg. Sudden closure. Mm -hmm. No, I guess they're uh, still showing movies through August 24th. Yeah, throughout the season. Closing after 75 years. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be? Townhomes. Yeah. Yeah, wah, apparently wah. some guy bought the land that they were leasing and yeah. wants to turn it into apartments. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Like every other field <laughs> in Idaho Falls. <laughs> but uh, the Motor View is doing Throwback Thursdays in August. Free admission. Yeah. August 1st, Shrek. The 8th, Labyrinth. The 15th, Jaws. The 22nd, American Graffiti. Which I still can't believe that you haven't seen Labyrinth. You started it with me. I haven't, but I do know you remind me of the babe. Oh, the what babe? The babe with the power? What power? The power of voodoo. You do? <laughs> you do? <laughs> <We're> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. You do what? Remind me of the doo-doo. <laughs> Throwback Thursday. So grab, seriously, grab your wife or grab the kids and yeah. throw them all in the SUV. Especially if you got a, a big old family, like now's the time. Yeah. Go when it's free, babe. This is it. Yeah. Gates open at eight. Movies start 30 minutes after sunset, which uh, about this time of year is around 930. Right. Sunset's around nine. Yeah. And what a good way to put the kids to sleep because they get so yeah. excited and hyped up and they run around the house and act like assholes, right? And then <laughs> they get there, you get them seated. Halfway through the movie, they're all conked out, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On a Thursday night. Mm-hmm. It's like the the weekend eve. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to address rumors with this sword pick right here. I So I got these special sword picks from on Amazon. <laughs> on guard. <laughs> uh, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Uh, I, okay. First of all, look at this bag. That the uh, swords came in. It's obviously from the Chinese oh. because their slogan is, it's not enough that we do our best. We have to do what's required. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> they were so close. So close. <laughs> Just flip the reverse those and then. Uh, and flip it and reverse it. We, we have to <laughs> do what's required. It almost sounds like a plea from slave laborers. We have to do what's required. Oh, I honestly, that's I sad. think that should be our slogan. It's not enough that we do our best. We we have to do what's required, or the master will whip us. Anyway, <laughs> so, so we're, we're going to use these swords. Oh, you're going to have to cut that. <laughs> we are addressing the rumors right now that watermelon tastes good with mustard. I can't believe we're doing this. We have our watermelon. 
It's right here mm -hmm. in our nice little ramekins. And we have, uh, let's take a look at the mustards we'll be using. Ooh. First, we have. This part I'm excited about. French's yellow, the classic. We also have my mustard. My is a French Dijon. I'll show the bottle. Yeah, would you? Thank you. And then uh, Beaver Brand mm -hmm. Stone Ground because Carly was like, doesn't oh, like we some Beaver Ground. Yeah, <laughs> and I do <laughs> love Stone Ground. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So okay, here's the thing. Two of my favorite foods are watermelon and mustard. I put mustard on everything, so this makes sense to me. I don't get it <laughs> at all. Uh, although I do know we're progressing as a species. When somebody figured out that you can put salt on sweet. Like oh, right. salted caramel. I was oh. like, salted caramel Twix, probably the best thing that's been invented in the last 100 years. Right. <laughs> you know, honestly, maybe. Okay. Now, I'm coating mine pretty thoroughly. Like, I want it to be mostly yellow. Uh-huh. If I can help it, you know? Okay. Uh, and it was gonna... all yellow. <laughs> Thanks, Coldplay. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Okay. Delightful. I love that. I winced because it hit that tang center. Mm -hmm. I guess I haven't eaten anything today. <laughs> I would hope not. Jeez, are you okay? Honestly, it tastes like a hot dog, <laughs> but with a sweet finish. You know okay. how vegans will be like, try this watermelon. It tastes just like a side of beef. Right, right. Huh. These mushrooms taste just like a steak. Right. Okay, now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Mm -hmm. I have had watermelon and mustard before. Okay. I already knew it was great. This is a first for me. Now, uh, I have, I've only had normal yellow mustard. I had it last summer with my mom. Uh, but I'm really excited to try this Dijon and the Stone Ground because I want to see how it compares. Let's. Now, every charcuterie that I make includes some stone ground on it. And yes. I personally like to put it with sweet stuff, so I'm really excited to see how that one goes. But and, I'm going to start with and the Dijon We, we could have gone crazy. We could have brought on the honey mustard right. and the sweet hot, because I do have a variety of mustards I know in the IFAF test kitchen. Well, because, you know, I like a variety of mustard. Right. I, I just really like mustard is the thing. I try to keep things on hand for Carl here. Yeah. This is the My Dijon mustard. Ma, it's French. It's M A I L L E. Hmm. Is the My short for mild? Because that's a very mild, mild mustard. Ew, no. That's a no yeah. for me, dog. I yeah. like my mustard, but. Yeah, I don't like those two together because this isn't tangy enough. Right. It's, this is uh, way too mild. This tastes almost like hummus. Yeah. That doesn't even taste like mustard. What is this? It's, you should have it on like a ham sandwich. I'm sure it's great on there, but it doesn't yeah. taste like mustard. Mm. Mm. Hmm. I mean, I'm not going to defend the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Defending the mustard. You're not going to defend the French? Tonight on IFAF. <laughs> you know what's funny? Is there's <laughs> yeah. French's. Which is not a French mustard. Mm -hmm. And then there's my, which is a French mustard. <laughs> All right. Now we're doing the stone ground. Yes. You got me this like big, big ass piece of watermelon. And I want like half of that. So give me a second to cut this in I half. Just, I got to cut up how Walmart cut it up. Right. Right. I put like zero effort into this experiment. Fair enough. Here we go with the stone ground. Now this one, I have a feeling will be very good. Because I like to put stone ground with sweet. Who are you people? Mm. 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 No. No. It's a big no from me. Yeah. That's not great. Which is a shame. Because I like that raspberry stone ground mustard I have is delightful. So I assumed this would also be delightful. Ugh. What am I doing with my life? Now, that being said, that yellow mustard with it, tits. Oh. I dig. The the yellow like. mustard, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you had to just go and get fancy, didn't you? 
<laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry that I'm a scientist. Hey. I like to try things out. I like quick, to experiment. <laughs> while we're doing this, mm-hmm. watch this watermelon video here. <clears throat> it's a weird, and I, and I wish I saved the TikTok that I saw after this video, but like, see how that watermelon looks like tongue? Like there's a whole, did you know this? There's a whole TikTok trend about, f- f- I don't know, fake food, fake fruit. Oh, what? Yeah, like people peeling the coating off of watermelons and and showing things that look like w- rubbery watermelon mm-hmm. and showing things that, like, I don't know, prove we're living in an alternate reality or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe the fruit's just rotting a little because I've had wa- <laughs> rubbery watermelon and it's been past its prime. Or not fully developed or mm-hmm. not um, like it didn't get enough water. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the was- day, this is an organic material. And it's going to act up sometimes. Yeah. Sorry, dude. I need a palate cleanser. I need just one piece of pure watermelon. No mustard. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sticking to the French's. I guess I'm being a wuss tonight because, mm-hmm. uh, whoo, that was just not good. I like it. But if you want these cute little swords... Amazon, eight bucks. <laughs> uh, we should totally become Amazon affiliates, by the way. We should. I just want you to know, they not only try their best, they have to do what's required. Right. Just like us. Bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we. That's why we do this shit on a random Saturday night. Mm. Mm. I think I can get over myself. You're just loving life. Yeah. So, okay. I spouted my opinion about the three different kinds of mustard. French is yellow. Mm-hmm. My Dijon and uh, Beaver Stone Ground. Mm-hmm. I love the Beaver brand, by the oh, way. Horseradish, creamy horseradish, Stone Ground mustard. Completely agree. And their Sweet Hot is fantastic, this, too. Don't have anything but like regular yellow mustard. Okay. Everything else is shit. I kind of do want to see if honey mustard doesn't suck with this because I feel like that one makes the most sense. But realistically, of the three we got, this is the way to go. Right. This yeah. is where it's at. And you know, it reminds me a lot of how, uh, like in Mexico, they'll do a little bit of lime and some chili powder and stuff on watermelon. Okay. And that is fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why this makes so, so much sense to me. Because it's sort of like the white people version. They're like, oh, what's spicy? Mustard is spicy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I like tacos. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, realistically, like, what you're comparing here is just sweet and watery with tangy and, uh, what's another good word? It's like sweet and savory, yeah, basically. Yeah, basically, it's sweet and tangy. Yeah. You know? Sure but your if, if I think about it, I will never do this again. I Why? There's no oh, need. Totally. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. If if I really want to party at a picnic, I'll mm-hmm. have a hot dog with mustard and ketchup. And uh, screw you, Chicago. And and then some watermelon for dessert. Mm-hmm. I will never combine these two things again. Whereas salted caramel is craveable. Fair. And I already, I just figured out how someone came up with this. They were at a barbecue, had a hot tug. Yeah. I'm sorry, had a hot dog, just a ton of mustard on it. Yep. Dripping out the sides. <laughs> also on their plate, they had some watermelon. They went to take a bite. The mustard fell at the end onto the watermelon. They didn't really bother scraping it off. They were like, ah, it's fine. I'm not going to taste it. Like a Ate Thanksgiving like, plate oh, hey. where all, where flavors, mar- you know, get your green bean casserole mm-hmm. mixed with the stuffing a little bit. You get a little gravy on the... Precisely. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's how this came to be. And now it's a trend. I have a mustard seed on my teeth. I need a flosser. Is it time to sell your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. 
For over five years, I've been helping Idaho with real estate, buying, selling, investing, and now I'm joined by Carly Morgan so we can help even more. You know us for telling it like it is on this show. We do the same when it comes to selling your home. And we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. And when you close, I donate $100 of my own money to a charity of your choice. So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Lincoln Post. Have you experienced locally raised beef? Virgin River Land and Cattle Company sources local Angus fed on green Idaho pastures for rich beef flavor. Right now, they've got a great deal on ground beef. Make some burgers and enjoy some summer grilling. You can taste the quality in the ground beef that comes from one local cow for the same price as hamburger in the store. Find them on Facebook, search Virgin River Land and Cattle Company, and use promo code IFAF to save 15% on locally raised beef. If you feel like going thrifting, make sure to visit Elsie's Closet, upscale resale. That's trendy fashion that's budget-friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, they have everything for summer. Shorts, skirts, dresses, crop tops, and tanks. It's not just a stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. Have you ever heard of a candy salad? Guests bring a bag of their favorite candy, then everyone at your event can mix together their favorites to make a delicious candy salad. Mmm, sugar. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has so many fun containers to display the candy. It's an amazing treat and just another cute idea from DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208 208- 403-2040. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. Our friends at Roof Rescue are doing something cool in celebration of their 10th anniversary. They're giving away four free roofs to people who make a significant impact right here in our community. Know someone like this? Nominate them for a new roof today. Lincoln Post. Maybe it's a veteran or a member of the military, a first responder, teacher, or anyone who deserves it. You can also call your local Roof Rescue in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Logan. Lincoln Post Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Have family or friends visiting you in Idaho this summer? Send them home with the best souvenir, a unique t-shirt from Teton T-Shirts. Yeah, if the Idaho Falls tourist tees at local gift shops aren't doing it for you, type Teton T-Shirts into your URL window in your browser, or just click the link in this post. Enjoy a real piece of Idaho from TetonT-Shirts.com. Okay, we flossed and I brushed my tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, People are... So dramatic. ...bitching about the Olympics? For a lot of reasons. Okay, I, I don't know... All I saw was the meme with Snoop Dogg Uh (laughs) running with the torch in Paris. That's all I've seen. I haven't even watched the opening ceremonies. I haven't even seen that. I've just seen the outfits and trash. Well, not all of it. The American ones, I'm a little disappointed that the women's volleyball team are wearing leggings. Does that make me a dog? Yeah, it does. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> First off, I just, you can those still little see, shorts were so cute. I get it, but you can still see their entire legs. Like you get the physical structure just without the color of skin. I feel like a dog now. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I but, thought a bad thought in my head, <laughs> and now I'm feeling bad about it. Yeah, good as you should. <laughs> I'm mostly enraged about the outfits, specifically the opening ceremony outfits for the U.S. team. Uh, okay. They scream, wait till my father hears about this. Okay, Malfoy. <laughs> uh, they look very like private school. Like I play croquet on the weekends for fun. And <laughs> Which like, don't get me wrong. I would love Ralph to play Lauren, croquet. Ralph Lauren, right? Was yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. And I love his stuff. Right. Gen- like generally, but like they're so blah. He was Tommy Hilfiger before Tommy Hilfiger. I'm just saying I could buy the shit at the Gap. Huh. And I love the Gap. 
But like, yeah, it's old like Old Navy. Could you get old it at Navy. Old Navy? Could, yes. Oh, that's bad. I could bad. get it. I could get it at Old Navy. I could get it at Target. Uh, might even be able to get it at Walmart, but it might be a little nicer than that. <laughs> Although you know that you can get Ralph Lauren at Walmart now too. No kidding. Oh, yeah. So, bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's basically just like a boarding school outfit. Huh. And okay. they were like, let's put the U.S. team in this. Oh, that's sad. That's it's, too bad. It's sad. But yeah, I'm dying to watch the opening ceremonies to see what people here are so upset about. I, no I idea. Tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, they're, they're talking about God. Like, oh. God is looking down at this world and judging us because of whatever opening ceremony. I, you know. Okay, if anything, it's the aliens who are watching us, but okay. <laughs> yeah. We're a little Petri dish. I'm just kidding. No. But, but you know, uh, I can't imagine it was that bad. I, also, well, I can't imagine being so upset about something so trivial. Does anybody watch the Olympics? The only reason I, I mean, watch the Olympics do. today is because it was on at a, a restaurant that a buddy of mine and mm -hmm. I went to for his birthday wings. I mean... I do watch a couple of uh, sports. Okay. Um, I specifically really like the gymnastics uh, yeah. segment that oh. they do. That's always so impressive. The floor routines. Oh my goodness! And you were in acrobatics for a while. Yeah. So so you know, you know I have a, a little extra appreciation for it. Yeah. They do things I could never even dream of. Uh -huh. You know, because they've been doing it since they were like three years old. <laughs> First of all, I think it's really clear to everyone that you and I are both avid indoorsmen. Yep. I love to explore the great indoors. <laughs> right. Like, I'm not sporty, per se. Uh -huh. Like, I'll get into a hobby that might require some physicality, but, but I like it to have a roof <laughs> over it. <laughs> but when you're watching the Olympics, something funny happens. You're like, that was such a shitty routine. <laughs> right. Like, six out of ten, I say, as uh -huh. I'm sitting... On my couch with chips, you know, <laughs> resting crumbling on your chest, on my <laughs> yeah. shirt. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone becomes a critic all of a sudden. Yeah. They're they are the best sportsmen ever, and they know exactly what that person should have done, <laughs> yeah. even though they've never done that sport in their right. entire life. You know. Right. Yeah. We need Zach Shepard with his armchair experts over here. Right. Did you hear that uh, Salt Lake City has been awarded the 2034 Winter Olympics? I did hear that. So in 10 years, yeah, we're all going to drive south and it's a party. Or not, because that sounds like a or not. bitch to deal with the crowd. I was in the, uh, I was in the SLC. I was uh -huh. in the 801 oh. for, in 2002. Oh, way for, back in the day. Yeah, for the Winter Olympics then. That's hot. When you're in a town that has the Olympics and you're in media, uh -huh. you get to do some baller shit. Oh, I'm sure, right? I went down a bobsled track at like 80 miles an hour. They clocked us. <laughs> okay, that's and so cool though. I saw the Dave Matthews band in like minus 20 degree weather. Okay, that sounds because they, actually, that they sounds were the really band. Cool. Who's going to be hot for the 2034 Olympics? Um, I okay. vote Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, They'd be hot, hot, dude. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that, that'd be cool. Okay. But did, did you hear that it's kind of under threat now? What? So apparently because the folks in Salt Lake are sort of like calling out China for their like alleged doping stuff, they're saying like, oh, well, maybe you guys won't be hosting it after all. Can't call out China these days. I guess not. Not even my uh, little stabby watermelon swords made from <laughs> slave labor. Right, right. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. I have a feeling they will. Here's something kind of funny about the 2002 Olympics, though, that were held in SLC. So when I was in seminary class, because I used to be a very good little Mormon, <laughs> I have a degree in everything. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> They, I remember my teacher talking about this one passage in Nephi where he's talking about like the future and he takes Nephi basically to a, he shows Nephi a vision of the future and he's talking about like people wearing skin tight clothing and women wearing uh, earrings like the moon. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but basically a lot of Mormons think that the vision that was shown to Nephi was the 2002 Olympics billboard. Oh. Because it's the guy yeah. in this like skin tight uh, skating 
uniform mm-hmm. and like the uh you know women wearing the moon on their ears it's like hoop earrings you know wow. and like women taking very small steps it's because they're wearing heels and stuff so huh. like you know all the things that make people like sexy and attractive <laughs> nephi was like oh no <laughs> you know oh he said it like it was a bad thing yeah okay yeah basically they were like huh. the world is full of heathens and they're doing terrible things like oh no people are wearing aerodynamic clothing for their sport that helps them do better <laughs> the world has always been full of heathens yeah can right. we just make that clear clearly yeah i mean look at us <laughs> <laughs> Minute, minute, minute. Okay. Have you noticed when you step outside after work uh, in the afternoon now that the world looks like it's in night mode on your phone? Oh, yeah. Do you have this? So I have night mode set on my phone from 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. to 7 a.m. Uh-huh. And it takes the blue screen, mm-hmm. the, the blue light from your screen, and makes it yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically warmer. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you're supposed to sleep better at night. I don't know. Well, yeah, because blue light mimics daylight, so it doesn't uh, trigger the melatonin in, in your brain correctly okay. or something. Yeah. Um. So that's why they do the warm light, because it helps it feel like nighttime, because so, sunset is warm, I guess. Yeah, so there's oh, like... I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> so there's... We have an air quality issue, ladies and gentlemen, and to hearken back to our... Uh, last episode, mm-hmm. you can just look it right up on your phone, like right now. You don't have to wait for the TV weatherman person. Um, you can just look it up. Here's a couple of days. Mm-hmm. So I guess we have some wildfires or something happening. And so now when you step outside, like the sun looks red mm-hmm. and the, the moon world looks like looks, an orange slice, <laughs> the world looks yellow. Uh huh. Yeah, so we're having an air quality issue. Which, personally, I don't hate, because you know I'm a warm white girly. Yes, you love your (laughs) warm lighting. So I moved into my current place, and all of the light bulbs were like daylight, (laughs) and they were- Which I love. (gasps) I love the blue. Everything looked like a morgue. It was horrible. It was horrible. You switched out all of your light bulbs. I spent so much money- I went in the middle of the goddamn night. I was not living with that (laughs) shit. (laughs) But I went to Walmart in the middle of the night. I bought so many boxes of their warm white. I was like that Michael Sarah meme of him just like holding a bunch of shit instead of getting a cart. But it was all light bulbs. So if I dropped them, it was going to be bad. I went home and I replaced every single light bulb. Don't get it. (laughs) No. Okay. But then when you walked into my house the next time, you were like, oh, you're right. This is nicer. You said it. That's that's just because I'm trying to support you. Oh, Not everything I say, I don't mean lie. passionately. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a disclaimer somewhere that says we're just riffing. Listen, it is much cozier. Sure, 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 sure. You've okay, been to fine. my house and you're like, oh, it's so cozy here. Oh, anyway, so nice. <laughs> that's why the sky looks like it looks. I can't believe we haven't talked about this yet. Did you see this video of the Biscuit Basin explosion in Yellowstone? Right. Holy cow. Like it it happened in a little hot pot area with mm-hmm. a boardwalk over it. It right. blew the boardwalk away. Yeah. Yeah. No one was hurt. Thank goodness. Miraculously. Yeah. I will say I thought it was really human. The fact that everyone sort of stopped for a second and like was clearly very stunned before they started running yeah you know like i feel like you see all those action movies and you're like run dummy run yes and then you know being in it it's so different you're well and in yellowstone i imagine you're used to little pops here and there yeah you don't know how serious it is and pachoo but this was a kaboom right right yeah and uh and here's the aftermath check this video out a little bit It blew up the boardwalk, people running and screaming, Greg, you run away, run away. Right. In perspective, it sort of seems like a a pretty small thing, considering that we're sitting on top of the Yellowstone caldera (laughs) right now as we speak. This show ought to be- I mean, I guess relatively. (laughs) Yeah. But in the moment, probably not very small. Yeah. If this blows, we're all goners in a- Instant. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's it's okay, kids. If you're listening with your parents, and you shouldn't be, but if you're listening to the adults talk while you're sitting at the top of the stairs, 
don't get worried. It's yeah. it's probably not going to happen in our lifetime. Yeah. You, you're going to be in L.A. and a famous TikToker by then. Don't worry, kids. Well, and also, realistically, like, everywhere else in the country has way worse natural disasters. Yeah. Here's the thing. If I'm going to be part of one, I want to be wiped out. Hurricanes are I almost guaranteed. <laughs> right. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to deal with stuff. (laughs) You know, I don't want to be like drowning in a, you know, random pool made by a hurricane. I don't want to be sucked into the air by a tornado. I don't, I don't want to like fall into a chasm during an earthquake. I just want to go. I want a big explosion and a little poof and that's it. (laughs) You know? Didn't even feel it. You won't even feel it. It's like, it's like getting uh, vaccinated. Yeah. Just a little prick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You won't even know what happened. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Wow. uh, That was crazy. Well, and apparently it sort of led to some other things too, right? So I want to talk about one Sid Miller. He is the Texas ag, I don't know, secretary or something. He's a filthy liar. He is a lying liar made of lies. Okay. Because uh, everybody was reposting his, oh, look. This little baby mammoth was found in the aftermath of the Biscuit Basin explosion. I dug down and sorted Google by date. Uh He's the only person that reported that. He made up fake news, fake news, or his aides did, Uh his campaign did. um, Which, why would you? For fake internet points. That's not true. The baby mammoth was found in Canada, I think the Yukon, in 2022. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. Because I remember hearing about that before. Yeah. 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 So that little picture of the baby mammoth found in the Biscuit Basin explosion aftermath, Mm -hmm. not true. Sid Miller, I don't know what your deal is, but um, you have now proven yourself untrustworthy. Shame. Shame on you. Shame. Shame on you. And shame. your campaign and your household. Shame. Yeah, shame. <laughs> right? Walk him through the wor- the streets like Cersei. <laughs> we fling our filth at you. Shame, Sid Miller. What's your deal, dude? You know Why what? You we should do. do? That? We should fling a baby mammoth at it. <laughs> <laughs> we fling our baby mammoth goo. Yeah. At you. <laughs> also, uh, y- you know how I'm a dick, right? I don't think you're a dick, <laughs> personally. Sometimes I'm a dick. And oh, I said isn't? to Carly about a year ago, I said, does anybody eat at Sherry's? Because I feel like that's just a sign you see on I-15 when you're near a town and all the ki- everybody's hungry and tired right. and you're on a road trip and you got to stop somewhere, might as well be the closest thing to the freeway exit. Right. Even our little intro coming out of the Idaho Falls sign, Matt Hill, Aerialized Visuals, what's up? Um, That was right in front of Sherry's. It was. They closed suddenly. Which I'm so sad about. Suddenly. Okay, here's the thing. Really? Just out of high school, I used to eat there fairly regularly. I they, have never eaten there. Which is, here's the thing. I've been telling you for like a year that we should go there, and now you can't. I know there's like 60 plusers that go there for coffee and pie. Okay, but listen. At like 4 p.m. Okay, but listen. They had this, like, they had these balsamic wings, and they were weird as shit, if you think about it, really. Uh huh. But they were so good. And they were so average, like Melaleuca no, Field. I. I listen. Philly cheesesteaks. You know what? Maybe when I was young, they were so the average world just and tasted more vibrant. Like I right? am. No, they were so good. <laughs> I okay. Here's the thing. I probably need to find some way to recapture the magic, which will never work. But okay, I used to buy them fairly regularly, and every single time I got them, they were incredible. So I think what you're saying is, Mike, nobody ate at Sherry's. I ate nobody there. ever went. <laughs> nobody you know. Listen. Ever went. And their pie was good. And that's why they're closed now. Their pie was good. Yeah, Sherry's, congratulations. I'm You're sad. below average and you deserved to close. You know what? You didn't even go. You have no opinion. I How can't wait you? to see what happens next. I hope you build a five-story hotel right there. But it, make sure you have at least one room that's the hot tub suite, would you? Mike, you are what? so mean. <laughs> yeah. No, let sorry. me listen. Let me love a mediocre restaurant here and there, especially because you usually pay for dinner. 
<laughs> if anything, you should be glad that I have shit tasting food. I will wear it like a badge of honors that I never ate at your below average establishment. You don't even know you weren't there. I don't mean to be mean. You're so mean. I, well, you be, sound like such a butthole. Be better then. Mike. Be better. You sound like a butthole and you don't even know you weren't there. Okay. You no, know, you're right. I wasn't there ever, ever. You'll never know. You'll never know the delight of a Sherry's balsamic wing. You know what? I really hope that if anyone else has had it, you know, what? if I have a Sherry's craving, tell me it's so good. I'll go to Perkins at like 11 p.m. Okay, Perkins sucks though. <laughs> <laughs> Perkins. Here's the thing. I've been to both. Perkins can blow it. <laughs> oh, really? Perkins sucks. Really? Yes. Sherry's was good. Perkins sucks. Perkins was the knockoff of Sherry's. Now, who's the mean one here? No, listen. <laughs> I've been to both. We talked I, about this. Perkins the, was actually purchased by Smitty's. But the difference is... You're upsetting your dog. Listen. But I've been to both. I have an actual opinion. <laughs> and Sherry's is better? Sherry's was better. Well, that's what's so upsetting. The only difference is that Perkins is in the middle of town and that's why it's still in business. If Sherry's was better than Perkins, mm -hmm. that's not saying much. It's not, but it was just <laughs> enough. And, and they were 24 seven. They were like the last 24 seven diner in town. It'll happen again. One would hope. In, in esta economia. <sighs> See. Si. I mean, at least we have pie hole that's open till 2 a.m. But oh, like, yeah. I had pie hole today. But listen, sometimes you need a 24 seven establishment. You need to know that no matter what time of day you can go there. Listen, if we get a waffle house in there instead, I've heard the food yes. is better, but also no, waffle house sucks. Well, but it's here's, terrible. Well, and also smothered and covered. I don't care. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. If you Sherry's, want to invite crime into your town, Sherry's, let's put a Waffle House instead of a Sherry's. Sherry's was Waffle House with better food and way less crime. Yeah. And we All just right. we just pissed it away. Okay, okay. Sorry, that sucks. I'm sad. I like Sherry's. No love lost here on this end. Like you didn't try it, so you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't like their food, but. Everyone can agree that potatoes rock. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, of course, here in Idaho, we're particularly proud of our potatoes. And that's why we have the Blackfoot Potato Museum. You went. I did. Now, we'd, we'd kind of talk about being a tourist in your own town here right. on this show. And you actually went. I, now, I went, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? Honestly, so as someone who's never been my entire life, despite the fact that I love potatoes, <laughs> like genuinely, and I could have potatoes for every meal of the day and still be happy. And you want a pair of those tater tot protecting pants. Oh, I want them so bad. <laughs> I want them so bad. Oh, by the way, Napoleon Dynamite Fest happened uh -huh. this past weekend in Preston. Right. I'm a little uh, sad we couldn't make the time to go. Yeah, yeah. I know. That would have been great, right? It would have been. I know. I was so tempted to try to push it, but I was just, I was so tired. They had chapstick making, boondoggle <gasps> making, chapstick liger drawing contest. Oh my god! Yeah, have been so fun. <laughs> so anyway, so you went to Blackfoot. You yeah. went to the Idaho Potato Museum. I sure did. Wow! And it was really fun, actually. Here's the thing: I think it would be much better and much more educational if I were willing to stop and read. <laughs> Oh. But I wasn't. <laughs> so it was like a reading museum. Yeah, I mean, you know, all of their little displays had plaques that would have been, like, it would have really sold the stuff a lot more and, like, would have made me care more if I would have read it. But I was with two kids, and I wasn't going to stand there and read while they were running around like maniacs. So I was like, whatever. Uh, but they did have some really neat interactive stuff, too. Like, they actually had this really cool little theater that had, like, four different videos, including, like, how they make McDonald's fries, which, like... Who doesn't love that? Uh-huh. And know? McDonald's exclusively uses Idaho russet potatoes. Right, right. Yeah. And it was all- Worldwide. Uh, yeah, and it was all narrated by one of the guys from Mythbusters. Oh. Yeah. They also had these um, VR 
uh, goggles that you could put on, and it was like a guy on a tractor um, plowing up potatoes, and you could look around, and it, I think it was like an infinite loop of the same video. Uh-huh. Uh, so, you know, that was kind of fun. And they also had a little Mr. Potato Head station <laughs> where you could like make your own little Mr. Potato oh, Head. Oh, awesome. <laughs> which I thought was cool. One of the things I actually really liked, though, was that they had this huge glass case of potato mashers. Uh, just like all kinds of different ones from all different eras. And they also had a potato cafe where I went and had a really good baked potato, by the way. Really? Yeah, it was pretty big. Yeah, you love your potatoes. Oh, yeah. I had a baked potato and a sarsaparilla. <laughs> huh. The funny thing is one of the kids I was with was like, why did you get a beer? And I was like, child, it's a root beer. I'm fine. <laughs> Wow. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and they also had, okay, so I feel like they really were trying to channel Disneyland on this one, but they had these like really creepy potato pillows in the basement. So like as you walk between the first half of the museum and the second half, there's like this stairway that goes down to the old basement and you can tell that like the rest of it is like dirt floors <laughs> and terrifying and totally haunted. But it's, like, roped off, so you can't... But really get, cool in the 70s. Here's the thing. You can't get to it. But, like, they've put a couch and a television in the part that you can see of the basement. And then they project these faces onto the pillows that look like potatoes. But they're, like, terrifying. Ah. Like, they're way... Like, they're just super uncanny. So if you haven't been recently and the kids are bored, right? Like Yeah. All and right. you got a hankering for potato history. <laughs> do they still offer free taters for out-of-staters? Matter of fact, I think they do, because I saw a couple of people walking around with a bag of <laughs> a, a couple of potatoes. Okay. Now, here's the thing. It's not a whole bag, you know, like you'd expect. Like yeah. you, It's not like when you go to Winco and you get a bag of potatoes. It's like a fourth of a bag. <laughs> Last time I went, it was just some instant uh, shredded potatoes oh. from Idahoan. Oh, it was like a little. That's honestly kind of smarter, though. Right? Yeah. Because that's something they could eat like immediately. We do offer free taters for out of staters. By the way, mm -hmm. on this show, if yeah. you come here and buy a home at closing, <laughs> we'll get you a twenty pound bag of Idaho russets, baby, and probably something else. You can make your own <laughs> McDonald's fries right there in the comfort and safety of your own home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, potatoes are cheap, easy, and delicious. That ought to be Kinda our slogan. Like me. If it <laughs> Oh, just kidding. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> did you just? Here's a first for Idaho. We've apparently just opened our very first safe haven box in the entire state. It's down in the Grove Creek Medical Center in Blackfoot. So actually relatively close to here. Also relatively close to the Potato Museum. You're going to have to explain <laughs> what that is. So basically me. a safe haven box is a drop box for babies. So if um, someone were to give birth to a child that they recognize that they couldn't care for or didn't have the means to take care of or something like that, they can take them there, put them in the drop box. It's completely anonymous. It'll trigger a silent alarm that will get medical staff to go check on the baby and take care of them. So it's sort of a great way to surrender your child for adoption without having to do any paperwork or deal with people. You can just do it anonymously, quickly, and, you know, Guilt-free, more or less. Okay, we are really switching gears here, but this seems important. This yeah. is, you say it's the first of its kind in Idaho? In all of Idaho. Okay, wow. Yeah, which is kind of nuts to me because I feel like, personally, I feel like this is something that should be in every big city, at least. And by big city, I mean like the biggest cities within that state. Yeah. You know? Um the thing is that there are just kids who are born in situations that they're not really, that aren't well suited for them Boy, all the time. I hope this doesn't happen to you, but if it does, right, this is an option. The thing is, no one ever wants this to have to be used, but it's so much better than a kid living a life where they feel completely unwanted, where they're abused, neglected, all of the horrible things that can happen to a person, and instead they're you know, put into a safe place and given up for adoption to people who actively want kids. I don't mean to use language that sounds insensitive, but it's a unwanted baby drop off. Yeah, basically. Is what it is. What? And I, I don't even necessarily want to use the word unwanted because this baby could be wanted. But realistically, some people recognize that they just aren't equipped to deal with it. 
Right. This is so. This is like the modern equivalent of dropping off a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, leaving it on an orphanage church, doorstep. <laughs> doorstep. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or or putting the baby Moses in a river. Right. I mean. Wow. Instead of risking your kid being eaten by crocodiles, you now can know that they're going to be well taken care of. I'm glad we've progressed. Okay. Yeah. So what happens to the baby afterwards? Uh, So basically, there's a silent alarm that's triggered when the box is opened. Medical staff go in and and attend to them, make sure that they're all good, basically clear them health-wise. And then after that, they're put up for adoption. And also, I mean, what better parents than people who are actively working to adopt a child because that is a process. You know there's people who are desperately wanting a child. Right. You know, and rather than putting this kid in a situation where you don't know if you can care for them and they might not feel cared for, it's so much better to give them the chance to have a better life, you know? And at least this way, whether you're a teen mom who's somehow hidden her pregnancy from her, her parents the entire time, you know, or you are a full grown adult who just recognizes that this is not the time for a kid. You have this option to, you know, give them to someone who can and wants to take care of them rather than putting them in a situation where that might not be the option. Finally tonight, what does that mouth do? (laughs) (laughs) Dinner's ready. Mean in your house. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's a very different sentence. Hat tip to charity on my feed who posted this. You have uh, four options. Here we go. A, it'll be done in 15 minutes, so finish up what you're doing, then come to the table. Mm -hmm. B, dinner's almost done. Come help set the table real quick, then we'll eat. Mm -hmm. C, food is plated and will get cold if you delay, so come to the table immediately. Or E, this is your last warning. Come immediately or suffer the wrath of your mother. (laughs) What does dinner's ready mean? In your house. Now, as a kid, mine was definitely a B type of situation. So dinner's almost done. Yeah. Come help set set the the table. table. Uh, Now, the funny thing is, I was the only one who ever set the goddamn table. Ah. (laughs) You know? But yeah, basically. You a bunch of bums, did you? (laughs) I guess so. Basically, my mom would be like, hey, dinner's ready. Carly, come set the table. And I'd have like, I'd go set the table, I guess. Or actually usually it'd be like- Was that a gender roles assignment kind of thing? uh, I mean, to be fair, Tyson mowed the lawn, so. Okay, yeah, right. Well- Five minutes a week or five minutes a day each week, Even (laughs) in a genderless roommate situation, there is such a thing as division of duties. Right, right. You take out the trash, I vacuum, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Well, and you've heard of like spoon theory, right? Huh. Okay, so basically uh, someone was using like uh, spoons to represent energy and they were like, you know, some tasks just take more energy, more spoons than others. Uh, Now for me, the thing that takes most of my spoons is litter boxes because whenever I do them, uh, I always feel like I have to shower afterward. Right. I could scoop litter boxes all day. Right. Yeah. Everyone else I know can. Like they'll go in, they'll scoop them, they'll go about their day, no biggie. Me? Absolutely not. It's a dirty no. job. You're micro. You're in the mm-hmm. sewers. Right. And well, you and also, de- like, I, like, I get in there and I scoop every little particle. Sure. You know, like, I make sure that nothing in there is, I, I make sure that every single thing in there is just litter. Carly, we're all thorough. Okay, well, no. Okay, you're not special. No. <laughs> she is special. I'm particularly <laughs> thorough. On top of that, I'll lift the big old totes up over my washing machine, mm-hmm. okay, and sweep and stuff. Not everyone does that. Some people just tilt it and just leave the shit on the floor, all right? Right. Absolutely not. No, no. Okay? Yeah, there's yeah, there's, there's hand vac. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. afterwards. Yeah, like I will sweep under the boxes. I'll sweep the entire room that they're in. Yes. I'll, yeah, I do a lot. Okay. The litter box and surrounding areas are clean. Yes. When you're done. Yes. For sure. And for some people, doing the litter boxes means just scooping what you can see very quickly and being done. Okay. I don't know <laughs> how we went from dinner table to litter box, but. We're talking spoons here. <laughs> di- we're talking, yeah, okay, division yeah. of duties, yeah. spoons, okay. So, anyway, point is. That's something that takes a lot of my spoons for other, like when I was married and stuff, he dealt with litter boxes. I would do dishes because I could do dishes all day. I hated them, but they didn't take nearly as much energy as litter boxes did. Right. No, I get it. Yeah. And that's kind of what you got to do when you're dividing duties is, what do you not mind? Right. I hate this. Mm -hmm. What do you not hate? 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would always set the table when I was a kid All is right. the point. I would do that and I would grate cheese. When I hear <laughs> dinner's ready, I definitely think that there's still some work involved. Right. There's still a little more to be done. So I, I guess I would have to say B or C, food is plated and will get cold if you delay. So come to the table immediately. So like I, I definitely expect to show up and mm-hmm. then have some instruction <laughs> like, uh, hey, can you take these three things to the table? Mm-hmm. Or now I think you can, attest- can you grab the silverware? Right. I think you can attest to this for me. Um, when I personally say dinner's ready, like now as an adult in my own home, it's that the food is cooked, it is ready to go, and I'm just about to plate it and hand it to you. Yeah. You- like if I say, hey guys, dinner's ready. I'm like literally about to start scooping it onto plates and handing it to bitches. You ring the bell as if the chuck wagon chef mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> during pioneer days. Yeah. And saying, come and get it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Uh-huh. So it's not already plated like answer C. It's definitely like right between B and C. Table's okay. already set and stuff, but the food is still on the stove being kept warm. I'm just letting y'all know to come get it because it's about to be on a plate where it's going to get cold. Yeah. And and I don't mind, you know, showing up to the stove. And, and by the way, I've been on both ends of this. Right. I have some friends who have been married for 30 years and they show up like a cattle call and are just like, feed me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. As if they're Audrey too. <laughs> and they're talking to Seymour. So my uh, current living situation is open concept, which is nice, like my current house. Yeah, a lot of them are. Right, right. Personally, I hate open concept. I, I, love I it. like a little division. I don't like people to be I, able to see my dishes from my front door. It pisses me off. So do your dishes. There's the easy solution. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's the point. But I get it, yeah. But yeah, if I'm having a dinner party, I'll have people show up while the food is still being made. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not expecting them to get there, like, yeah. within 10 minutes. I'm talking, like, yeah. the hour it's getting made, y'all f- are sitting in my living area. Relax, hanging, have a drink. talking with me while I'm cooking. Uh-huh, yeah. You know? And nine times out of ten, you're in the kitchen with me being my little sous chef, cutting my shit up. <laughs> I love to chop stuff. And thank God, because honestly, I'm so... Speaking of spoons, that takes a, a lot of spoons for me because I take so long to chop it's, shit. It's effortless for me. Yeah. It is effortless for me. I don't me. get that. I love to tackle an onion and dice the shit out of it. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I like the result. Like, I, I get the catharsis, but man, it's just, it takes me so long. I'm a slow cutter. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Right. Right. It's Everything just- else I can do speedy as well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's really fun to align strengths with weaknesses right. and cooperate like that. Yeah. That's fun for me. Yeah. But basically, when I'm making dinner, people are already in the general vicinity waiting for food, probably smelling it getting cooked, too, and being, yeah. like, extra hungry, and that's which exciting. I kind of love, by the way. Exactly. I love showing yeah. up for a dinner party when they're just putting the finishing touches on things. <gasps> I love it. Oh yeah, I love I'm to not even chat talking fish and touches. I'm I'm talking like we haven't even started cooking when you get here. <laughs> Y'all are waiting, <laughs> you know. You but got like, everything prepped and it's right. just about to hit the pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Which, I like that too. I mean, all of my people know that that's the case. Yeah. You know, like I'll tell them like, hey, I'm gonna start around this time. We're gonna eat around this time. Just show up somewhere in there. <laughs> but yeah, I like that because then everyone can hang out a little while I cook. I get the entertainment of getting to hear everyone chit chat and everyone gets to smell it as it's cooking, which I think builds anticipation and makes it taste better in the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And then that way, when I say dinner's ready, I mean like food is cooked. We're going to plate it. We're all going to eat. I'm getting hungry. I know, right? Well, like, that's we our just show. Had dinner and I still want some more. <laughs> we might have to go get some snackies after this. <laughs> Hope you have a great week. Subscribe on YouTube. By the way, we're doing great. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much. We need 500. We're at 400 already. Oh, we're so close. Yeah. We could all, like, listen, we could all benefit. We're you know four what? fifths of girl, the way there. Girl who told me I love you at Long Legs for our fun little conversation, uh-huh. come join us. Tell your friends. I really wish I would have been like, hey, you should, like, follow my podcast. But I felt like I know. Works, we need so to I hand didn't. out our cards that we got printed. I know, and right? stickers. Yeah. Yeah, I do sometimes. I've stuck them a couple of places. Have a great week. Hit that like button. Toodles. Leave your long legs at home. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs> <laughs>